Okay, so this is basically, imagine you just got on the bus, it's been sitting overnight, your air system, air system is about 100, uh, sitting at about 100 PSI. You can see here's our primary cluster and our secondary uh, gauges. This is the 2016 model uh, Thomas built bus. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, our air brake, our emergency park brake is out. It should always be out because we've secured the bus when we parked it the night before. We've got our key in the ignition, but the bus is off. So we're gonna go back to our cluster here we're going to start the bus. Do not have your foot on the service brake pedal. Your park brake is set and it's holding your brake, so you don't need to be on the service brake. By the way, for the sake of nomenclature, this is the park brake or emergency brake. Your brake pedal is what we're calling the service brake. Okay, so we're going to start the bus. And I'm going to cut these noisy fans off. If I can find my noise control, my noise control button. So what we're doing right now is we're letting the air pressure build up to 125. You can hear the engine revved up on its own naturally. Um, the engine's revving up to help build that air pressure up. You see your gauges are climbing and we're looking for the pressure to cut out. That's what this little tick mark is right here, it's 125. So we get close, we're gonna listen for those brakes to cut out. You're gonna hear it. Okay. There the brakes cut out. Now we're at 125. Now we are going to shut the bus off and we're going to start doing our leak test. So we're going to turn the key off and then back to the run position. Now the reason we're doing this is because you cannot have your engine running while you're doing a leak test. If you do, then your compressor could kick in and start building pressure back up and it would give you a false positive. You would look at your gauges not falling think you don't have a leak but it's actually because your compressor is replenishing the air faster than the leak so we cut the key off the first step in the leak test is we're going to check our our parking brake and make sure that it does not leak okay so we're going to release the park brake now when you're taking your test we're on flat ground here so I'm not gonna bother chalking my wheels but when you're taking your test uh, for DOT and if you're ever were anywhere on a sloping ground you must chalk your wheels because when we release this parking brake, we are not going to be on the service brake either. So the bus can roll because you're also in neutral. These buses don't have a park range, okay? So we're going to release the brake, and when we do, we're going to see our pressure fall just a little bit, and then it's going to stabilize. And when it stabilizes, we're going to start a count for one minute. I don't have a stopwatch, and I'm not going to count off for a full minute and bother you guys, but we're going to start a one-minute count, and you're going to look for no more than two PSI fall. Can you read two PSI on this gauge? I can't, but it's a logical test. You're looking, you're watching that needle, okay? When you're sitting in the seat like I am right now, keep your eyes locked on that gauge and tell your instructor, I am watching the gauge to fall no more than two PSI as you're doing a one minute count, okay? So let's release our brake. We are not on the service brake. We're gonna release that park brake. We watch our gauges fall. and they stabilize, boom. Now you would start one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000. If you have a watch, that's even better. Your instructor is going to have a watch and they will allow you to count off if you want to, if you don't have a watch, but you better not count too fast because if you say you got to a minute and they're only at 50 seconds, they're gonna dock you. So if you can have an analog watch or stopwatch, that's great. Don't use the watch, the clock on your phone. That's not, I don't even know if it's allowed, but it's definitely not recommended. Okay, we've been to a minute, our pressure has not fell. Next leak test we're gonna do, I'm going to put my foot on the service brake. We're going to push and hold the service brake for one minute, looking for a leak of no more than three PSI. Push, hold. Okay, now we start. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000. I was going a little fast there. No more than three PSI fall. These needles are sticking tight. They're not moving at all, so that's great. Okay, we're gonna say it's been a minute. We're gonna let off. Now we're gonna start fanning down, and what we're looking for on the next step is for our emergency alarm to go off below 60 PSI. So we're gonna start fanning the brake, and we're gonna wait for that annoying buzzer to go off. So you're just pumping, bing. See mine actually, look at that. <laughs> it went off at about 75 and then shut itself back off. 
Okay, so now our alarm is going off and it's telling us, hey, you're dangerously low on air pressure. That's all you're looking for at that point is that around 60 PSI, it should set the alarm. Now you're gonna keep going. And the next thing we're looking for is between 25 and 40, our emergency brake should pop out on its own. So keep going. Bam, there it popped out. That is it for your bleed down test. You don't need to go all the way to zero. So now we're gonna start the bus and we're gonna watch it build back up. And what we're looking for here on the build up, we're looking for that alarm to shut off when we get above 60 and I'm gonna rev it up so it hurries up and gets there. That alarm shuts off when it gets above 60. Should be right in here somewhere. And then we're looking for it to build from 85 to 100 PSI in less than 45 seconds, okay? This tick mark is actually about 75 PSI. There are alarm cut off, so that's good. So we're gonna let it get a little past that tick mark and we're gonna call that 85 PSI and then we're gonna start counting off to get to 100. It has to go from 85 to 100 PSI in less than 45 seconds. And we'll say about now, 85. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. 19 seconds. We're at 100 psi. At this point, you have technically completed the bleed down and the build up. But we're going to go ahead and let it build on up to one. We're going to rev it up. We're going to go ahead and take it up to 125 just so it cuts out again, just so we can kind of double, triple check our cutout. You don't want a system where the cutout doesn't work and the thing builds dangerously high and pops off. That's it. Okay, so that's it for your leak off and bleed down. The last two things that we're going to check, we wanna check and make sure that our parking brake can hold against the transmission, and we're going to check that our brakes grab evenly, okay? So we are going to cover the service brake. We are going to release the parking brake, and we're going to put the transmission in drive. Just kidding, we're gonna set the parking brake. Okay, so now our parking brake is set, we're in drive, and we're just gonna let off the service brake. The bus doesn't move. You can actually put your foot on the pedal, rev it up a little bit, and you can feel the bus pull. You guys can't really see it, but you can feel the bus pull against that brake. This bus didn't move a fraction of an inch. So that demonstrates that your parking brake can resist the transmission, and your bus will not move. The parking brake is doing its job. Now we're going to release that parking brake. We're still in drive. We're going to roll forward slightly with our hands off the wheel. When you take your driving test, again, tell the instructor what you're doing so he doesn't think you're a crazy person taking your hands off the wheel. You tell them, I'm going to roll forward slowly and I'm going to stomp the brake to make sure that my wheel does not jerk excessively to ensure that my brakes are even, okay? So we're going to start rolling forward. Stomp it. That wheel didn't move, okay? No more than five miles per hour. You can watch the speedometer if you want. Roll forward, stomp it, okay? That demonstrates that your brakes are grabbing evenly. You don't have one out of balance that's jerking the wheel. It's very important that you have your hands off the wheel because if your hands are on the wheel, you will naturally resist that jerking motion and again, you could get a false positive, okay? So that's it as far as the bleed down and the build up. You have fully demonstrated that everything is working. Now remember at the beginning of this, if you were on the sloping ground, you would have chalked your wheels. And so before you do the roll forward and stomp test, you would have to pull your wheel chalk, unless of course you don't travel any further than the length of your wheel chalk. But you do not want to run over your wheel chalk on the test. The tester probably wouldn't appreciate that very much. On mine, I actually had to start the bus, pull forward just a little bit because it had rolled back against the chalk. I had to pull forward a little bit, reset the park brake, get out, remove the wheel chalk, get back in, and then do the roll test and the stomp test. Um, so just think about those things. Absolutely though, make sure you chalk those wheels um, and make sure you know that you have your hands off the wheel when you do the stomp test. 
do not have your foot on the service brake when you're checking the parking brake lead down little things like that um, you don't want anything that's going to give you any false positive 